In this segment, we'll show you how to assemble your new 32 inch poly spiker spreader assembly. Warning the spike points are sharp. Exercise caution when handling or working near spike discs. Begin by securing a hitch tube part 11 to the right hand side of the hopper using two 5 16 inch by 2 inch hex bolts part 17 and two 5 16 inch flat washers part 35 and two 5 16 inch nylock hex nuts part 27. Then insert a tube plug, part 48. Now repeat for the other side. Fully secure the handle brace bracket, part 5, to the lift handle, part 9, using a 5 16 inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolt, part 32, and a 5 16 inch nylock nut, part 27. Now slide on the height adjustment grip, part 45, onto the lift handle. Next, insert a 5 16 inch by 3.5 inch hex bolt, part 14, through the transport tube, part 10, the lift handle, part 9, a medium spacer, part 42, and then through the hitch tube. Loosely secure it with a 5 16 inch nylock nut, part 27. Do not fully tighten it yet, as this is a pivot point. Insert a 5 16 inch by 2 inch hex bolt, part 17, through the transport tube, part 10, two 5 16 inch flat washers, part 35, and the handle brace bracket. Fully secure the assembly with a 5 16 inch nylock nut, part 27. Now onto the left side. Insert a 5 16 inch by 3.5 inch hex bolt, part 14, through the upper hole on the transport tube, part 10, a medium spacer, part 42, and the hitch tube. Loosely secure it with a 5 16 inch nylock nut, part 27. Do not fully tighten it yet. Next, loosely secure the hitch tubes using three 5 16 by 2.5 inch hex bolts, part 15. And three 5 16 inch nylock nuts, part 27. Do not fully tighten them yet. Align the hitch brackets part 13 and loosely secure them with two 5 16 by 2 inch hex bolts part 17 and two 5 16 inch nylock nuts part 27. Do not fully tighten them yet. Then install the hitch pin part 21 and secure it with a 3 seconds inch hair cotter pin part 25. Next, fully secure the assembly. Secure the fasteners at the transport tube and hitch tubes. Now, assemble a half inch by four inch hex bolt part 16 and a half inch washer part 34, and then slide it through a wheel part six. Then slide on a half inch washer part 34 and thread on a 0.5 inch hex jam nut part 29. Finger tighten only. Next, secure the assembly to the transport tube using a half inch nylock jam nut part 28. Adjust it so that the wheel spins freely, but there is minimal play. Then repeat for the other side. Now, screw a quarter inch nylock hex nut, part 26, all the way onto the flow control link, part 44. Next, assemble the ferrule, part 46, onto the link. Then start a quarter inch nylock hex nut, part 26, one or two turns onto the link. 
Now, secure the ferrule, part 46, into the hole at the end of the flow control lever, part 2, using a quarter-inch nylock hex nut, part 26. Tighten the nut, leaving it loose enough that the ferrule can pivot. Next, assemble the control arm grip, part 43, onto the end of the flow control lever. Now, align the center brace, part 3, with the hopper. Then insert the quarter inch by one and a quarter inch hex bolt, part 19, through the center brace and the front of the hopper. Then insert the flow control lever, part two, into the slot in the hopper. Now assemble a nylon washer, part 36, the flow control lever, and a quarter inch nylock hex nut, part 26, onto the bolt, do not tighten it yet. Then insert a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch hex bolt, part 19, through the center brace and the rear of the hopper. Then fully secure it with a quarter inch flat washer, part 37, and a quarter inch nylock hex nut, part 26. Fully secure the front hopper brace bolt now. Insert a 5 16 by one and three quarter inch carriage bolt, part 18, up through the slot, and secure it with a nylon washer, part 36, and a 5 16 inch wing nut, part 39. Move the lift handle to the locked position. Then tip the spreader back to rest on the wheels and the rear of the hopper. Now move the flow control lever part two as far as it will go to the off position. Then push the feed plate back as far as it will go to the closed position. Next, place the bent end of the flow control link part 44 into the feed plate bracket. Next, slide on a quarter inch washer part 37 and secure it with a 3 seconds by 3 quarter inch cotter pin part 24. Next, tighten the lower quarter-inch nylock hex nut until it touches the bottom of the ferrule. Then tighten the upper quarter-inch nylock hex nut until it is snug against the top of the ferrule. Next, open and close the feed plate using the flow control lever. Check to make sure the feed plate is closed completely when the lever is in the off position. If the feed plate does not close completely, adjust the quarter-inch nylock hex nut on the flow control link. Note that forcing the flow control lever may result in permanent damage. Do not force the flow control lever. Now press two flanged bearings, part 22, into the drive disc, part 8. Now push a flanged bearing, part 22, into a spike disc, part 7, as shown. Then repeat to complete all eight discs. Next, press a flanged bearing, part 22, into each of the end plates. Slide the quarter inch spacer, part 40, onto the spike disc shaft, part 12. Then insert the shaft through the flange bearing in the left hand end plate. Now slide on a .785 washer, part 38, followed by a short spacer tube, part 41, pressing them over the flanged bearing. Then slide on the drive disc, part 8. Next, slide on a spike disc assembly, followed by a long spacer, part 20. Then another spike disc, ensuring the spacer fits onto the ends of the flange bearings. Now slide on a 5 8 inch flat washer, part 33, followed by the compression spring, part 49, and then another 5 8 inch flat washer. Next, slide on a spike disc assembly, followed by a long spacer, part 20, and then another spike disc. Then slide on a long spacer, part 20. Next, slide on a spike disc. Then slide on a long spacer tube, part 20. Now slide on another spike disc. Then slide on a long spacer tube. Now slide on a spike disc. Then slide on a long spacer tube, part 20. Next, slide on another spike disc. Now slide on a short spacer tube, part 41 followed by the .785 washer, part 38. Then push the shaft through the end plate bearing, ensuring they fit on the end of the flange. Now slide on a 5 8 inch flat washer, part 33, onto the end of the spike disc shaft. Then secure the shaft with an 8 inch by 1 and 1 half inch cotter pin, part 23, by spreading the ends of the cotter pin open. Now secure the drive disc to the shaft with an 8 inch by 1 and 1 half inch cotter pin, part 23.
Assemble the one quarter by one and one quarter inch shoulder bolt, part 50, an 11 32 inch washer, part 51, and a spacer, part 52. Then add three 11 32 inch washers, part 51. Install the assembly through the left end plate and secure it with a quarter inch nylock nut, part 26. Ensure the spacer can spin freely. Remove the connecting link from the chain. Then align the chain with the two sprockets, ensuring it's aligned in the middle of the washer, spacer assembly. Now secure the chain with the connecting link. Then align the chain cover part one and secure it with two quarter inch by half inch hex screws, part 31. Press in firmly when starting the self-tapping screws.